Uh, is that anything like a six inch limber tube? No, but I doubt you clean that either. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 172 for Thursday, the 3rd of May, 2018. Wow, it's already May, dude. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, Kent is here, and ladies and gentlemen, after many, many promises and after much delay because, well, they have better shit to do, we have <laughs> Lienzo with us in the house. Uh, Adolfo and Edgar, man, so proud to have you guys on the show again. How y'all doing? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a big honor. Thank you. I'm finally, I'm happy because we finally could settle on uh, on a date and I could make good and our <laughs> promise to keep in touch. <laughs> For those that, that aren't familiar with the name Lienzo, might be familiar with the name Mulaka, which is the highly anticipated, uh, super fun, exciting game that you guys published what what has it been now like three or four months ago i think when uh, it went live two months it's two months ago it's been, it's been like six weeks dude like you are so <laughs> bad at time <laughs> no, i'm not good at things <laughs> it's been like uh, literally oh. six weeks anyway uh yeah um we have anticipated this game coming out for for several years now we've talked about it many times on this show uh super excited to get you guys on now that now that you've had a successful release of the game and um, uh, yeah, like, how, how do you guys feel about uh, it's now it's real? You're published on all the major systems. Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Yeah, it's it's a huge sigh. Of, I mean, at first it's like uh, it was obviously nerve wracking, and then it's it's really just like, oh, finally. And then oh. it's dealing with all the. Uh, it's not a blowback, but it is the reception of the game. Uh, some of it is blowback, but it's mostly just good positive reception. Fortunately, so far, so it's been a uh, it's been amazement and relief and more amazement. And uh, we often think that people are kind of like messing with us when they tell us so many good things about the game. <laughs> uh, but but it's generally a good feeling. Uh, yeah. I just I, before we get into uh, your week and things like that, and, be, and before we start deep diving into Malacca, um, I want to know: Have you gotten any uh, any bad cultural backlash from it? Any any little groups sitting around just wanting wanting something to scream about that they've come at you for? Uh, if if people are good, if people can be good at something, that's definitely complaining, you know. So there's always always somebody out there. Uh, that we'll find something to complain about, but really, that's like the minority of of of, of people out there. It, it's the the positive comments have been overwhelming, really. And I mean, yeah, there's obviously every time there's one guy uh, complaining about something, but it's uh, it's it's a good thing in a way because it it allows us to speak about what we did well with this community or with this lore, with this legend, with these people and talk about that, that effort, you know? Mm. Well, that's, that's awesome. Um, Hey, so I got to ask you guys, uh, you know, game developers, long meetings, uh, release schedules, years out, uh, multi, multiple conferences and probably flying everywhere and everything else. Um, What was the geekiest thing you guys did this week? The geekiest. Hmm. Huh. That's mm, a good question. I don't know. For me, maybe that's on that's on on the background, like on my TV. <laughs> like I've been playing a lot of that. I've been sleeping at like two a.m. every day of this week, just playing that thing. Probably that. For, I for, guess. I had, for, for those I just had, listening, uh, he's playing God of War. He's got God of War uh, on the TV behind him back there. So <laughs> probably that. <laughs> I had uh, my weekly Dungeons and Dragons sessions yesterday, mm. nice. so maybe that. I'm a DM, and I have uh, this group of friends, which actually two of them are part of the studio, and we get uh, together every week and just like have D and D sessions. And I'm the dungeon master, and we have like a theme song, and <laughs> we actually use like minis and the whole like the whole deal. Wow, that's that's uh, awesome, man! I wish I had that in my life. Hell yeah, dude! I, that's I, I, I would join your. <laughs> I, I, I join tried your to get that going with the kids this last summer, and we just it was just 
never had enough time to really do it on a regular basis. Or we had babies running around trying to grab our papers and steal our pencils. <laughs> um, and for those who are wondering, I don't care what level that dragon was that you uh, that you slayed in 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 that dungeon or that castle or whatever. Uh, it can't. It doesn't have anything up to my four year old. My, <laughs> yeah, my four year old is yeah. is immune to whatever spells you wrote down on that paper she just ripped up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she thinks of your spells. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Kent? Uh, what's uh, what's going on with you? Um, man. The water quality in the desert sometimes sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we've got a very high mineral content in our water, in our municipal water here. And uh, I I know I've talked about on the show before that I have a swamp cooler as opposed to like your standard AC or mm-hmm. as we call it down here, uh, refrigerated air. <laughs> uh, which has, for me, for the most part, has been fine because, you know, it doesn't get quite as cold. It doesn't become, you know, your house doesn't become like an ice box or whatever. And I'm okay with that. I, I like the warmer weather. Um, but usually when the, when the equipment works right, it cools good enough, right? Um, but the problem with a swamp cooler is that it needs a constant stream of water going into the system. And considering that it's our municipal mineral-filled water here... It's very destructive, and I am finally sick of repairing things on my swamp cooler <laughs> multiple times every year. Uh, yeah, dude, I've got a I've got a consultant coming out tomorrow to look at at swapping over my entire HVAC system to like modern to central air everything. <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm done. That sounds like fun. <laughs> I, oh I have I've lived with swamp coolers once in my life, and my memory of it, the reason I remember the swamp cooler is because we constantly had to go to the roof, clean the filters, clean the drain, uh, w- wipe out the, the fan. Like It was like it, two or three times a year we had to do all this maintenance, and it didn't matter what we did otherwise. Like Eventually, like you'd wake up one day and like, oh, yep, the, the air conditioner is out, but we got to go up top, and it'd always be like 110 that day too. Oh, yeah, yeah, every time, every time. This is the most adult conversation I've had the entire week. If you're coming to Ritual Misery for your adult conversations, you are in the wrong place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, what about you, Amos? Uh, hopefully you did something a little more fun than, than that. <laughs> oh, my God. Al- almost as painful. Almost as painful. Um, so we have been planning this vacation for almost four years. My daughter's graduating uh, high school in, in like the second of June. We've been planning this trip for like four years. We off and on had this idea of doing Disney. We finally settled. We are going to do Disney. We've been pinching pennies every possible way we can to afford this damn Disney trip. And the final planning fell into place this week. Like all the little, all the little pieces are done. All the purchases are done. The only thing we have to worry about now is buying food while we're there. It's all finally settled in, and uh, this big woo-saw moment came at like 2 o'clock in the morning the other night because I finally, the last thing we had to do was buy the wristbands, so, so you know, the little the fast pass wristbands, stuff like that. Right. Finally got those in order, and now it's just a matter of let's not forget shit when we go down there. <laughs> <laughs> like a child. I mean, don't forget it. Yeah, I don't need I don't need Home Alone, the five year old version with my five year old running around the house because we're all in in middle of Florida while she's up here in Alaska just enjoying the cool weather. Yeah, I was gonna make that Home Alone reference because you have enough children in your house. I think they they it's <laughs> it's plausible. It, yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah man. Um, I'm I'm just happy that that's finally in the place, and I'll, I'll be glad when it's over and I can actually go to McDonald's and not feel guilty that I'm stealing food out of my my kids hands at disney world instead of just eating <laughs> like we've been pinching the pennies man um and the other thing i did this week uh, i did for well i did actually last week but uh we got the results this week podcast mm-hmm. rodeo have you guys heard of this no, no what is that <laughs> so podcast rodeo is a is an interesting little podcast it's about uh what, what about five minutes typically in length it's like five mm-hmm. to ten minutes usually mm-hmm. Where they take a podcast and they do uh, – so like a rodeo, you know, you're supposed to stay on for – stay on the, the bull or the, the bronco for as long as you can, right? Hopefully at least eight seconds. So that's what he does with the podcast. He hits play and then he gives, gives real-time feedback as he listens to it and he listens to it as long as he can before he has to turn it off. Mm-hmm. 
so he reviewed Ritual Misery for his show. Um, when I listened to the file, Amos, I don't know about you, but I was in a constant state of cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I so I'm the, I, I'm the one that submitted us, so I knew I knew which, which episode they were going to review and everything else. And I had gone back and tried to find like the let me find the best one and submit that so we can get all this positive praise. And I was eventually like, you know what? Every episode we do something that I know we're not supposed to be doing. It's just the nature of having a live show that we do and, and the conversational aspect that we have. Well, let's just submit the latest one. So he reviewed episode 170 from two weeks ago. And mm-hmm. I, after I submitted it, I went through and updated the iTunes description. I updated the, the metadata and everything else, made sure that it was all up to snuff. All the stuff I've been ignoring doing just because, well, nobody cares, right? Uh, he loved the descriptions. He loved the intro. It was only 10 seconds long. The intro music was 10 seconds long. We got straight into it. Um, and that's where the praise ended because he was like, why are you guys talking about this one punch man for so long? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm bo- He said, I'm bored like twice. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, but, but the one sh- piece of advice that he gave toward the end that I, I think is kind of the take home that uh, I guess justifies, uh, all the rest of the critiques was that he said, you guys need to decide, are you doing a live show or are you doing a podcast? Right. And that's the, you know, that's the thing, because we're trying to straddle that line. We're trying to do both. Uh, We do have a, I would say probably a bigger like podcast downloading audience than we do uh, like for the turnout for the live show. But I think we format ourselves as a live show. Right. So I don't know. It's an interesting balance. We'll we'll see if we're going to like tweak anything and make it a little more podcast friendly <laughs> I don't uh, my 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 big takeaway on that is if you if you have a podcast look at me look at me out there if you're watching this video look at me um if you have a podcast and you want some genuine critique and uh some genuine feedback go to podcastrodeo.com and and just get it get get the the unbiased opinion don't let your friends tell you how good your show is we should have done this years ago we'd be way better off than we are oh yeah um, go do it. And if you haven't listened to the show, uh, Rucha Misery will be featured probably within the next week or two on the actual podcast feed. So go check that show out. It's great. Uh, I knew exactly what he was going to say about Ritual Misery before I even submitted us because I'd been listening to the show for a while. So I already knew like, oh, we're, we fail on that one. We're not doing that right. We're not doing that right. And we're doing this right. and We're doing this right. So um, go do it. And uh, you can only make yourself better by getting some genuine critique from some unbiased people. Yep, and uh, so far we have fixed nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, because why would we do that? <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I have one more super fun thing that happened this week, and that was watching Avengers: Infinity War. Mm. Have you guys seen this yet? Yes. No. Yes, okay. I have. Oh my so god. So no. So no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but would you oh, give it? Would you give it up? <laughs> but, so you enjoyed the movie, Edgar? Yes, I did. But I'm also a geek for. I mean, I've read all the visual novels and all the crossovers and stuff like that. So it's. Uh, I rarely hate on anything done on the NCU or the DCU. Like rarely, I can't remember the last movie I hated uh, because it references things that. I already like in my mind, like for example, uh, the last uh, the last DCU movie uh, where they do all this weird shit with Superman and they bring him up in this weird fashion and stuff like that. It still is uh, one of my favorite characters doing cool shit, and that uh, that can't that cannot not resonate with me. So I'm just the lover of all things geek. So I'm really biased in that opinion. I mean, I don't I don't get down to all the plot and like, you know, general things that you normally would if you could take the movie. Yeah. I just gush and fangirl all over and, and that's about it. <laughs> well put. Uh, that, I think that's the way I've been with all of the MCU movies. M- MCU and Star Wars. I've just I've got nothing, nothing but love. Uh, um, now, Adolfo, you, you said you haven't seen it. Is there a particular reason why? Too much God of War? <laughs> uh, I mean, 
I, I don't I, I don't I don't want to like <laughs> disappoint you, but I'm I'm guessing there's no other way around. I'm not a Marvel nor superhero fan at all. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, he's he's yeah. more, he's Sorry. more on my side of this. Like I can appreciate <laughs> okay. it for what it is, and I appreciate those who are really into it. But it's not necessarily my thing, and that's why I'm like three movies behind. So I obviously have not seen it. Uh, I see. Well, Amos, I will I'm say in. to you, the the movies that you have enjoyed of the MCU, uh, you are going. This movie is going to pay off. Yeah. Uh, for your time investment in, of in the MCU, this movie is a big payoff. It's. In Absolutely. Am I gonna like it more than Deadpool two? Oh, probably not. Oh, okay. Then, then I'm not worried about it. Then I'll watch it when I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, Deadpool is something. That's a, that's a different thing altogether. Deadpool is my kind of comic movie, though. That's exactly the, that's what I want out of my MCU. I want Deadpool. I just want Deadpool all the time. So one thing <laughs> that I have to say that I, I I am not happy about with Avengers: Infinity War. I am not happy that it's making a shitload of money for and we are now no longer in first place in the movie draft. Yeah, yeah, about that. Um there's uh I'm trying to I'm trying to find my little link here. Um there it is. Let's uh let's do this real quick since that's kind of a thing we do. Welcome to your B Team Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of April 30th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice J. Hey, did y'all feel that seismic shift? I'm sorry, I thought it was safe tucked away in this little room. Let's go to the scoreboard. Teams The Vod Squad and Walking Drunk are tied for last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Movie Party's in fourth place with $53.7 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $131 million. Second place goes to Team Retro Misery with a paltry $163.6 million. And with Avengers Infinity War being the only movie that mattered, drawing a box office take of a quarter of a billion dollars, how much of that is yours? Team Have a Drink rockets into first place with a staggering $335.5 million. At your Movie Draft Minute, all totals are accurate as of 7 p.m. Central. Tuesday, May 1st, 2018. Uh, and thank you, Big Voice J. Um, <laughs> Kent, uh, once again, we do have two movies left, Hotel Transylvania and um, the Tom Mission Cruise Impossible. one. Well, yeah, we've, got, well, we've actually got three movies left because we've got, we've got uh, uh, Hotel Transylvania 3, Mission Impossible Fallout. Life of the Party. And, and Life of the yes. Party, yep. Yeah, so um, it might as well be only two movies left. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm still hanging on to the fact that our movie, the one that we bought, the one that's been out so far, A Quiet Place, has earned $10 million per fake dollar spent. So yeah. we have the best value movie so far. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Uh, uh, unfortunately, we don't get bonus points for that, but... Uh, mm. So that's pretty cool. I don't know. I, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting how this shakes out because they, they have quite the commanding lead, but... Uh, uh, a Quiet Place still has legs for us as well, so yeah. it's kind of earning a little bit of money in the background. We're going to, I don't know, we if we can nickel and dime these guys. I, eh. I'm actually really encouraged by the fact that as of right now, as of the, the recording of the show, Avengers fin Infinity War has $322 million, like not even near a record. Like it didn't, People did not go out in droves for this movie. It's just a really, really strong performance. It's not the record-breaking movie that we feared it might be. Well, I mean, it started out that way. It broke. It broke opening weekend records. Uh, but it's in, it's going to be interesting to see what second weekend brings because yeah. it, if they can bring in anywhere near that number this coming weekend, yeah, we're done. Like it's game over. Yeah. Um, have either of you guys seen uh, a Quiet Place? Yes. Oh. Yes, I have. That movie was amazing. Do you agree? I, I, I'm really shocked and blown away in a positive way with what comedians are doing as directors. It's like, <laughs> it's shockingly good and great and amazing. I mean, I was all for uh, Peel's uh, work last year and John Krasinski this year. It's like, damn, because I was a fan of them before for their other work, like Kim Peel and The Office. And with mm -hmm. this, they're like, holy crap. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Ab yeah. Absolutely agree. Um, um, if 
you guys out there think that Ritual Misery is doing good things, you can show that support by going over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Uh, if you give a fuck, you can give a buck and keep this show going. Also, for uh, for the audio listeners, if you head over to twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery, we go live there every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central. You keep doing this, dude. I know I do that dude. every time. It's, 7 p.m. It's written down Pacific. as 7 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> but you, you try to convert it to Central because for some reason you think Central is more important. We have Pacific down for a reason, dude. Man. Yeah, nobody I know lives in Pacific time zone. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, but head over there, and if you are a an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can log into Twitch with your Twitch Prime, and you have a free five dollars subscription that you can give out to anybody. We'd love to take that from yeah. you. Give us uh, Jeff Bezos money. He doesn't need it. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, however, if you've got about, uh, uh, you know, if you got some time on your hands, you need to kill and you got a little money in your pocket and you need to spend, I can't think of a better way than to go on to steam and buy Mulaka and play the shit out of this game <laughs> because it's amazing. Um, I, the second you got, cause you guys in, in full disclosure, they sent us a couple codes so we could play it. So we weren't having to pay for it. And, uh, we, we got it ahead of time, um, by like a, about a week and a half, I guess. Um, and we played the hell out of it and it's amazing. It's so fun. It, it reminds me of classic gaming meets 3d with like this story that I want to know more about. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah. I, which, by the way, it's right now on sale on Xbox One. So right now it's running with a 10% discount on Xbox One. So if you're nice. an Xbox One owner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Get on that. Get That's out. So uh, what would be the way, like, um, should, should you just go into the, like, built-in app store and search Malacca? Is that the best way? Or would you recommend, uh, like, going into Steam and getting it there or... What do you think is the best way to uh, you know for for people to find this game? I mean, it's really the same game across all prof- across all platforms. It's on Steam, it's on Humble and and GOG on on PC, and on consoles, it's on Xbox One, PS4, and the Switch. Um, so, so I think what Kent was was trying to get at actually is which one of those stores nets you the most money. Oh, <laughs> it's it's the same, really. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's really the same. We we, yeah. we, we had some friends, uh, a friend of ours uh, that, that writes books, and we were like, uh, so what? which way, because I can go to Barnes & Noble, or I can go to Amazon, or I can go to Inkshares, which way gives you the most money for my purchase? And he said, well, Inkshares gives me the best uh, best commission rate, but it, whatever's easiest for you, as long as you buy it. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, the so thing for the audio it. listeners... Uh, Mulaka, if you are curious what how that is spelled, it's M U L A K A. Tell tell our listeners what is Mulaka like? Mulaka itself is that a is that a place? Is that a is that a technology? Is that a a, a race of people? What is Mulaka? What does that mean? M- Mulaka is the name of our main character. So Mulaka is the name of the game and the name of our, of our main character. It means cornstalk. It actually means cornstalk, but it's actually a normal uh, everyday name for the Raramuri or Tarumara people. So it's like a John for the Tarumara tribe. Mm, got it. So the you're referencing a tribe. Um, can you tell us who these people are? Is this just like um, is that just an old name for people from Mexico, or is this a particular a particular group of people? So the the Tarahumaras are actually uh, a native tribe from northern Mexico, specifically from our state, but it bleeds out a little into the U.S. and a little into other uh, bordering states. Uh, the Tarahumaras are what was commonly named by uh, anthropologist uh, Lumholtz, uh, the first caveman to be discovered in America. And they're still alive today. They're still uh, current. You can still see them and, and they're they're all around. And, and not, not, not only on the reservations, if you could call them reservations, where there, there really aren't reservations, but they're, they're all over the state. Uh, so for us, it's normal to see them and to like just be around them. 
but for people, they're they're what you would call an indigenous tribe and an indigenous culture, and they still have a lot of their customs even now. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of those customs, they also have been uh, westernized, or they have been. Uh, they're now a mixture of their culture and what you would call Western culture or religious uh, mythos, I guess. But in, in actuality, they're like an indigenous tribe native to northern Mexico. What is what is special about these people that uh, you thought would? What was special about them that you thought would be great to incorporate in a video game? R- R- why real, did you choose- real quick, why, why you formulate that answer? I just want to say how much I appreciate Kent not trying to say the name he knows he can't say. <laughs> because I just, I just Thank wanna, you for noticing. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not either. I'm not, there's not a chance. <laughs> okay, and back to you. <laughs> Sure. Well, it's 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 everything and it's nothing. It's it's everything because I believe that everything they have and everything they are is just as awesome or is just as I want to say exploitable in the best sense possible as all these other cultures that we love. For example, the northern culture, uh, Nordic culture, sorry, for God of War. It has a lot of elements that you can (laughs) exploit in the best sense of the word to make an awesome story. And in that sense, uh, they really don't, in my view, they really don't go up and above or they really aren't any better than any other culture native from any other continent. And that's exactly the point because almost every media has focused on the same cultures. We see... Again and again, this game's about the Nordic cultures or Asian cultures, or maybe even here in Mexico, only the Aztecs and 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 Mayas get love, you know. But we have over sixty different indigenous cultures, and I believe, I strongly believe that all of them have different things that can make them shine just as bright as these other cultures. Um, last time we had you guys on, the game was still you guys are still for, like programming. You, I believe. Uh, I believe last time you guys were on, you had um, some 3D renders of some of the characters and you had some gameplay, but it was like very limited. Um, yeah. Now here it is, what, two years later, uh, the game is out. What is... What is Three the, years, really? Is, yeah. That's long? Yeah, because last time we had you guys on, I was, we were, I was actually in my garage in Texas. I've spent a year in Korea and a year and a half here in, in Alaska. Like, it's been a while. <laughs> Wow. Um, I know, I know the show hasn't gotten any better. The game has. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> um, so so in, the, in the last couple of years, like now, <laughs> now that you have this, this game fully realized, what was like the biggest lesson that you learned in the process? Oh, wow. Oof. That's a little question. Yeah. It's that. That's a deep question. Like it, it really depends, I guess, on who you ask from the team. Um. Oh wow. Where did you go first? Yeah. You, you, see, go ahead. see, Kent likes to get people to laugh. I'm the serious one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the the first and most important thing that I crashed into was that me personally, I don't know shit. Mm. So uh, when we pitched the game for our investors, I was, I still am, the director of the studio. And the vision was kind of born out of my mind. And in the, in the view of other people, I had everything worked out because maybe I projected it that way because I had to sell the idea. And when I started working and, and directing, uh, I stumbled across the very harsh truth that I really don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know even today. And that and that comes with a really big lesson that you have to rely a lot on your collaborators and on your team and there isn't i mean there are geniuses out there that maybe have everything figured out but to think that you're one of them or that you can pull off something as ambitious as this game without relying a hundred percent on your team it's just ludicrous so that was the first harsh truth for me because it was really uh, 
ego dissolving, you know, uh, coming to terms with, you know what, you're fucking up, leave this to the hands of the people that you trust and actually let them take uh, creative decisions that maybe you have taken and that they're wrong, you know. Mm. There are really a lot of things that we learned. Uh, probably the first one that came to mind was the importance of reaching out, just reaching out to people, like not being afraid of a, of a big name, whether that's a company or the or or a guy or a girl. Like just not do not be. Uh, intimidated by that and just reach out get out there and how something as simple as being as just going to a party uh, and get a beer and just see a guy with a nintendo pin and just go and talk to him how far away can that take you and how much can that do for your project like it it it, it can mean uh, a difference that can take your company to being uh, to be as to be a successful endeavor, right? Because you yeah, can you like, can help him think that I mean you auto sabotage yourself. You know you're like oh I'm not that big of a deal. Oh. He's not gonna listen to me. What is he gonna think? I'm so ashamed. But hey, if you don't even try, he's not even gonna think about you. You're not even yeah. gonna cross his mind. You know. That's a yeah. w- was it Brian Brishwood says you miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Exactly, exactly. You already have the the, the no. Note. You know? yep. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Edgar, I I was I was really interested in in your answer about uh you know not not feeling uh like you know what you're doing. That's an issue that I've had for pretty much probably my entire life. Uh, definitely my entire adult life, where. Uh, I, I always feel like I'm a fraud. Like if I, if I'm doing a job or, um, you know, I'm, entr- I'm entrusted with a task or whatever, I'm like, Oh yeah, I can definitely do that. But then when I go to do it, it's like, Oh my God, like I'm a fraud. I I'm no good at this. I just suck at my job. I suck at everything. And it took me a long time to figure out that most people feel that way. Most people don't have all of the answers they might sound like they do, but they probably got an answer from someone on their team. Hmm. And yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. relate to to what you said. Imposter syndrome runs deep within us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, but but it's also it, it's also it's also a little bit of both things. I mean, like a balance because. For example, I, I have a lot of uh, situations right now where people ask us to go and talk to different places, which is the reason we had to postpone this podcast uh, for so long. Uh, they told us, you know what, we'll fly you out. We'll pay for your trip and your lodging and your food so you can come and share your experience with us. And the first reaction every time is like, why the hell do they want to hear from us? Yeah. You know, every single yeah. time. We're like, why us? But then once you get there, there's a lot of things that you take for granted that you're like, well, this is for me, it's like logically the way, you know, or this is just reason. It's nothing special. But there's a lot of people that for them, uh, it isn't. It's like the answer, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it cuts both ways, I guess. It's 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 still it's it's still very odd, though, like it's. It's something that we are still kind of getting used to, like being invited, you know, like being paid to just give a talk, like an hour talk. And we're like, internally, we're like, dude, like, why? You know, like, you're nobody. Like, we don't know shit. You know, we're like, really? Okay. But as Edgar said, you know, like, it's, I think it's, it's very important for us now that we have, uh, in many eyes, achieved something uh, and and really made a game and polished that. Like it's very important for us to uh, share whatever mistakes we made, whatever we did well, and just uh, drive people forward so we can have more uh, more jobs in the gaming industry to get more people creating stuff, creating cool things, and uh, and just making this a bigger thing for everybody of us. So you've you've got this game. It's not it's not your first game. But it's the first time it's been this big of a project, this big of a release, this big of a response. 
um, it, release day was what, like 27 February and 28 yeah. February, depending on what system it was or whatever. Uh, when did you, w- w- at what point did you like open your eyes and say, holy shit, we've, we've done it. We've actually put something out there and people are buying it. They like it. And we've, we've accomplished it. When, when did you get the, you know, when, when did you get the, the, when were you, when did you allow yourself to pat yourself on the back? It's still happening. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think the first moment we, well, at least I had that was on, on our release week. On Friday, we Friday March second, we had a launch party that we we, we just we just posted online and we will be having like a launch party in our city, uh, a, a like local launch party, and we had full house mm. on that event. Like it was super crowded. Like we got a ton of people. We were afraid in the morning that nobody would show up, and then we had like hundreds of people just on just standing in line to get in and we were like holy shit like this is happening and it was basically a celebration with fans and with gamers and with people who supported us along the way and i I think that was the moment the night where i went like with we did it like we made this it's out and wow like it, it happened and i think that was the moment and it's it, it's still unbelievable just to think about that for for, for us. I think it's and it's also so, something that's really uh, important is that it wasn't just friends and family. Actually, in my particular case, when <laughs> like it was like crowded as hell, I remember thinking, "Holy shit, there's a lot of shares, and it's gonna look crappy because they're not all gonna be occupied." And mm-hmm. uh, there were a lot of people. Uh, standing outside because they couldn't get in because the venue was full. And later, I saw I saw uh, my cell phone and I, and I got a lot, of, a lot of messages of people just texting me pictures of them outside, like, dude, I couldn't get in. And oh, wow. when we did when they did the presentation, we did we we gave out some, we gave some words, and then afterwards we got swarmed, like every every everybody in the team got swarmed in a different location in the venue, uh, and like signing autographs and like people taking selfies with us and just telling us that we had gonna, done a great job. And throughout the whole night, I, I couldn't talk to a single person I knew, like a, a friend or a family, you yeah. know? They had to call me afterwards and like, dude, you were like so proud that I couldn't get to you. That was like, holy crap, mm. eye opening. We don't yeah. deserve that much love from people, you know? Like we honestly don't deserve that. And we just hope that, uh, now that it happened, that people can get something out of that and just find motivation and doing what they love and just going at it and make some cool things. Uh, yeah. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna break out the hard questions for you. When Ooh. when you when you have a product and you have whether it's digital release, physical release, multiple systems, a single system, whatever it is, you put a oh, lot yeah. of time and effort into this game. You had to have had like some projections on how it would sell. Are you guys meeting or exceeding those pr- projections? It's it's very difficult with projections because really, like, we are making an indie game. Well, first and foremost, every single video game is a completely different thing from the rest. Like, because video games are not only software; they are art forms. And so when you try to compare different indie games, it's, it's difficult. Uh, the second, we are not a publisher. We're, like, we're not EA. We're not Activision. We don't have internal data we can look at and make, make some projections. We don't have that. The only thing that we have, because it's not, it's not even uh, a thing anymore, it was a Steam Spy. And that's just Steam. That, that, uh, that doesn't give us any data for uh, up on Xbox, PS4, and especially the Switch, because we always had this, uh, this, um, this, for, this variable that we really didn't know at all. Like, we didn't have a single clue how will the game behave on the Switch, because we, you don't look at the data on, on indie games on the Switch. So that was... We made some projections, but really they were just, like, numbers we pull out of our asses just to show that to <laughs> investors and you know like yeah we may be this but really so you guys were really think... just flying blind and hoping for the best yeah oh we, we, we were we were just uh, trying to push the game as much as we can 
Uh, we were just trying to drive the PR machine as much as we could and hope that that would turn, uh, turn out. We, to, we still okay. are. I mean, yeah, it's an ongoing are. thing. Yeah. You guys, you guys got a lot of media attention for this. Uh, what what surprised you the most, as far as like, was it was it video game media? Was it local media? Was it uh, maybe even like uh, national, like Mexico news? Like, wh where where did you get your most uh, most surprising attention? Probably like when we got IGN and Game Explain and like IGN, you know, like, and we got a GameSpot review, like those big gaming media names we were like holy shit like no, kind of funny the appearance in the ritual mystery podcast holy oh, shit yeah, man. That good. <laughs> good answer good answer that, that, uh, one, that one gave us a lot of sales you know <laughs> i just think <laughs> well we would like to think that uh that at least half of our 30 uh, 30 person audience would would go out and buy the game <clears throat> uh you know <laughs> we, we, oh, that yeah. would mean a lot to us <laughs> Um, oh, and we also we also got covered by a lot of media that had never covered a video game before. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about non-industry media, uh, right. a lot of people uh, or press that had never talked about video games, and you could tell by the by the article and by, by the the way they talked about the game uh, that they have never ever talked about a, a, a you know a, a video game before. And my girlfriend was like, uh, I remember she tweeting that. I, I I did something really cool because I was able to get respect uh, from her aunts and grandmom grandmothers because I was appearing in the media that they consume, which mm. is not at all gaming media, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that uh, well, you know, you know which one is still surprising for us. Uh, we like a, a, three years ago, I think we were part of an entrepreneurship program from. Um, from a thing from a news outlet here in Mexico, like the biggest uh, TV thing here in Mexico. And right now they are running an ads campaign for this year's edition and they selected us and uh, the game to be like a, the part of the campaign. So right now in Mexico, if you go to a movie theater, before the movie, you're, you're, you're gonna be watching an ad with us <laughs> on, the, uh, on the movie theater, on the screen. That, that I think it's, it's like, what? Like, because wow. I, I I think that was airing on the Infinity War premiere thing. Here. Oh jeez! So oh like every every gosh. everybody who went to watch Infinity War saw us on the screen. So like, uh, the, that was, that's that was crazy. Fun. The equivalent for us would be uh, getting Shonda Rhimes on the podcast. Uh, Shonda, if you're if you're listening, if you're watching, <laughs> come on our show. I need to justify doing this show to my wife, and you're the only person that can do that for me. Shonda, <laughs> if, I if need Shonda you, Shonda. Rhimes was just listening to this show that would be justification for <laughs> all of it no she'd make me stop if she's only listening she'd uh, she'd actually have to come on and guest on the show <laughs> or just send tweet me tweet me at ethan kane tweet me shonda i need something from you just to <laughs> <laughs> amazing um uh, so i'm i'm interested also in like what what is what's next for malaka are are you guys are you guys looking at at um, maybe Sequels, patching expansions. new levels for the game, or coming out with a sequel, perhaps, or maybe um, same gameplay style for a different game? Maybe uh, maybe look at a different culture. As um, you're as you're spitting out words, Edgar's over there shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm saying that. Uh, yeah, that that. Okay, that so so what's question. what's next for Malaka, and if not Malaka, what's next for Luenzo? Uh, that's yeah. a tough question. Uh, I'm going first, if you don't mind. Uh, in terms of uh, with what we want to do with Mulaka, we are constantly looking at comments. Like we read every single thing that has been said about the game on the internet. Like we read everything, and we take notes of every single thing that people are commenting about, whether that's good or bad. Uh, but obviously, we focus more on the negative stuff many times. So we are uh, assessing what can we um, improve. On the game like what can we patch what can we make better on the game right now like for instance just a few weeks ago we launched a patch that made uh, the menus the, the text on the menus bigger because mm. people were having some issues especially on the switch with that so like, we are are working on some small things here and there um we will be uh, uh posting what whatever new stuff we will be bringing to the game in the future on our social media sites 
Uh, but that's basically what it. Uh, I think it's safe to say that. Uh, we want we we want to move to the next big thing, and we are right now just uh, beginning work on that, and we'll be, we'll be talking about that uh, later down the line. But trust me, it's gonna be very cool. So I can I can only say that you shouldn't expect like a DLC type of deal because you're gonna be sorely disappointed <laughs> <laughs> just because just because I would rather I, I, I'd much rather focus that brain power and hours on the next thing instead yeah. of like because and also uh, a, a lot of people have suggested uh, uh, different things that can serve as a really cool DLC uh, for Mulaka but it, it wasn't conceived that way so we feel that will be like just a, a quick money grab or, or it, it would be really forced, you know, and that's mm -hmm. definitely something that we don't want. We, 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 much, we much rather would rather uh, move on to the next thing. Uh, yeah. We obviously want to keep building games, of course, and we're obviously going to stick to the things that we quote unquote know. So uh, not the same mechanics, but the same feel, I, I think. Hmm. Obviously, much better, but but the same thing, more. That's awesome. Um, man, I'm getting some fuzz from somebody. Ken, did you uh, did you have any other questions for him? Uh, I, I like to put Ken on the spot because why not? We got one of our guys on the chat. It's Guillermo, our programmer and writer. He's on the chat. Hey, man, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Kent, are you there? No, you're you're the you're the audio that I was hearing, or not th that I'm not hearing anymore. Uh, no, it's it. it he, okay, so you know it's screwed up, but you don't know what it is. All right, that's cool. Um, <laughs> it, uh, uh, in a uh, in 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 a few words, what uh, <clears throat> what's your proudest moment of this game? Is it the release? Is it the concept? Is it uh, the, the numbers that are coming in, or is it just the teamwork? Or what What is the one the one big thing that you personally are taking away from from the experience of developing and releasing this game? Whoa, um, the fact that we, that it got made, it's a miracle. It's it's something like I couldn't tell you how we managed to make a game out of the mush that we had, uh, and then. <laughs> See, having that in mind, the fact that it got where it is right now, talking about the consoles, holy crap, was that just something that we? I never thought that it would be even conceivable, you know? Like, on Nintendo, really? Our game? No, you know? That's awesome. Uh, you know, uh, for me, I think the proudest moment is uh, every single time that we get a message from somebody that is telling us that because of what we did, they, he or she, or they got inspired to start up their own video game studio and begin a new project. Every time we get a message like that, I go like, yes, like this is exactly what we want the most out of this. So that I think whether uh, the, whether the, our own studio or the game works or not, like just looking at people st starting up to like making the stuff and just getting uh, get, getting uh, get, getting to work on what they love because they saw that somebody managed to do so. Like I think that that's that, that's the best thing that that we could have ever done. That's awesome, Kent. Are you back yet? Um, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. You're yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can hear you, but you're crunchy as all get out. All... Got it. Okay. And, and, yeah, we're, I'm, and I'm... we're getting some echo. <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm having some issues. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, since you're back, why don't you go ahead and read uh, some some feedback, and then I'll load the file since I didn't do that beforehand, and then we'll merge it together and slap it together into what we call um, a podcast. All right, so we, we we received an interesting email from one of our one of our listeners, one of our viewers. Uh, Flavor Toothpaste sent us a note. Um, uh, he's a little bit behind on his listening, but he's 
he's he's getting caught up. He listened to a show actually not super far behind. He said uh, episode one sixty six. Um, he just listened to it, and he, he said something about uh, what did he say? Uh, with all the spelling troubles, I figured I'd help out. Uh, was basically how he summed up his experience with it, and he provided us with some audio. Do you want to go ahead and play that, Amos? Yeah. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-C-O-Y <laughs> uh, I might have to go back and listen to that episode to see if that might be referencing something. Because <laughs> I was like, what? Like, I had to play it like six times. <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, one more time for the uh, for the audience here. Yeah. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-C-O-Y um, that is amazeballs. Love it. Yeah, love it. That's love awesome. It. We, we always love getting submissions. If you, if you provide anything to us, uh, we will probably show it, play it, whatever it is on the show. Uh, you can send any of that sort of stuff to us at podcast at ritual Yep. 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 Um, Hey, uh, I had a, another thing about some podcast ideas. Thank you to, uh, Joe Juan for those, uh, for, well, for the discussion on Twitter, we'll get into more of that probably in the post show. But uh, we, we really want to know how can we uh, how can people find more about Lienzo and Mulaka and about you two in particular? Because let's face it, Lienzo is this, this company, this entity that people have heard about because we've talked about it because they released a game. But people want to know about you guys. So where can they find more about you? Absolutely. So we have a website that's lienzo.mx. So it's L-I-E-N-Z-O dot M-X. Uh, we, ha- we are on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, on Facebook, we are at uh, facebook.com slash Lienzo Mexico. And on Twitter, we are at Lienzo MX. And we basically post content every, uh, every single day of the week over there. And well, my own Twitter handle, it's, uh, oh, it's Adolfo Aguirre C. So that's uh, A-D-O-L-F-O-A-G-U-I-R-R-E-C. That's my full name. <laughs> and yeah, I, I tweet in English, so that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> and and, and I, good. I, I tweet in Spanish too, but that also shouldn't be a problem. What's wrong with you? Uh, my <laughs> my Twitter handle is Edgar Lunarcito. Lunarcito is the, the Spanish word for little mole because, well, because Re- of that. Because of reasons. And, <laughs> yeah, it's Edgar and then L U N A R C I T O. And we're really very accessible guys. So if yeah. you tweet at us, if you email us, if you contact us via uh, Facebook or Twitter or wherever, we'll respond pretty pretty quickly. Absolutely. Our content info is on, it's on our website as well. It's on the answer.mx. There's a contact tab. And there you can find the content info, not only for, for the studio, but our own personal contact info as well. And as Edgar said, we are very reachable people. So... Um, and of okay. course, sh- uh, show notes will have links and all the all the fancy stuff as well. Uh, how about you, Kent? Yep, RM Del Noche on. Uh, I'm sorry, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I've only been saying that for three years. Amateur. And I finally it up. <laughs> uh, pretty much everywhere else on the internet, I am either Del Noche or Del Noche seventy uh, seven. What about you, Amos? Uh, you can just find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E, and now you know why we have a song. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Uh, cruise on by RitualMisery.com for all of your uh, support and contact and all that other fun stuff. Um, you can find uh, us on Twitch every thir- Thursday at, at 7, 7 Pacific. Is that what it says here? 7 Pacific. Weird, Kent. Weird. See how hard that is? You just read it. That's That's what you do. Crazy. Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific every Thursday. Well, pretty much every Thursday. Like, well, yeah, on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And of course, we want to give a special thank you to one and only Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music, which should be fading in any second now. There it is. And uh, for me, for Edgar and Adolfo and Kent, and for you, this has been your. Ritual Misery Podcast. Yep.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y